I'm about to go over my teaching with tech rehearsal video. So I'll go ahead and start now. Um, I'm just going to let you know some parts I had technical difficulties, so I'm probably going to fast forward through those parts. Um, there's also a part where I have the students read a passage and it takes them a few minutes, so I'll probably fast forward through that as well just to save time. So here we go. I might take out that joke, as it was lost on my roommates. Apparently the computer's up. Okay, so let's go over some definitions first. A utopia is an ideally perfect place. So in respect of politics, laws, customs, and conditions, everything is literally perfect. It's like the best thing you can imagine. Can you think of any examples of a utopia for literature, movies, anything? I was teaching my roommate, so they were giving okay. me a hard time. So, a dystopia is the exact opposite of utopia, which is what we just talked about. So, basically, it's oppressive, and it's the illusion of a perfect society, but it's actually, like, the government controlling everything, or everything is being controlled in some way, and the people have no real freedom. So, can anyone think of an example of a dystopia? Yeah, she doesn't like to read plot summaries. Um, and then the Hunger Games, which is what we're going to talk about, which Crystal gave us as an example, um, is a perfect example of pretty much most of the elements of a dystopia, when you really think about it. So let's analyze an excerpt. This is kind of a lengthy excerpt. Can you read it okay? Or should I give you the book? Oh, I can read it. <laughs> but I don't know if like someone... Crystal, you're blind, right? I'm blind. Yeah, I have a link to it, so like when I'm presenting it, they can click on that and it will take them to Google Doc where it's bigger. Because uh, they should have it up on the computer. Okay. Just to clarify, my roommate is not actually blind. Um, my other roommate was just referring to the fact that she wears glasses and stuff, so like she was asking if she could see it from where she was, so that I would know whether I had to make the font bigger or something for the presentation. But as I just said to her, I linked it. So if someone can't read it, they can click on it and it will take them to a Google Doc where I saved all the text and they can just read it at their leisure and make the font as big as they want, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and I'm just going to fast forward through this part because she takes a while to read the passage. I don't know. Remember the details of what you just read or tried to read? It was a lot. Um, 
Um, and then we're going to watch a scene from the movie, and then we're going to compare the two. I was also having technical difficulties because I was using my roommate's computer to present so that I could film myself during the rehearsal. So I will obviously need to hone my technology skills for the actual presentation. Okay, and it finally started. Okay, so after watching that, I think I definitely did better than I did during the tiny teaching presentations in projecting my voice. I could still work on that though. Um, the other thing, well I guess I didn't move much around the room either, and that's something that I need to work on, but I was also limited to that little corner where I was standing, so I couldn't really move without obstructing the student's view. Um, and I guess for the final part, my roommate made a good point 
and she said that a lot of dystopias actually start out as utopias and then they something goes awry. So if the student wanted to write a paragraph about a utopia that they think could go bad and why, then I guess that could be an acceptable thing to write about instead of just creating a dystopia. Um, so yeah, those were the main things, I think. And that's it. Thanks.